Hey YouTube, in today's video I'm going to show you a fish that I have never seen in real life before. Um, I've kind of read up on them, I've seen pictures of them, but I've never actually seen one in real life and when I saw it, I had to get it. I blew all my store credit on it and I ended up getting, was able to get three of them. So stay tuned and you'll see what kind of fish I'm talking about. Alright, so let's just get right at it. These are them. Uh, this is a Spatuloricaria. Uh, commonly, common name is a long tail pleco. Uh, these guys are from Colombia, and uh, I've I've heard about these. I've kind of briefly read about them, but I've never actually seen them in person. And when I saw them, I just I had I had to have them. I mean, there's just just one of those fish that you see. And I just burned up all my store credit. I have to go take back some more fish to make up for it. Some more uh, guppies and plecos I'll be taking in tomorrow. But uh, yeah, awesome. They get about 14 inches long. These will go in my 240 gallon tank when I get that set up. But uh, they've been in here acclimating temperature wise for about 45 minutes, so I'm gonna drop them in. So as you saw, I used the plop and drop method. Uh, I've used that with great success. I know there's a lot of controversy about the best way to acclimate fish, but that's how I do it. Um, and I think I might have lucked out here. It looks like we have a female here and a male here. And you can tell kind of by the shape of their snout. Oops. Kind of how their heads are shaped and he's just a bigger bodied versus this female, supposed female, I think, who may just be hungry and need some food. But I also think the one over here is a female. I'm definitely gonna have to get a lot more pieces of wood in here, uh, places for them to hide. That'll probably be my project this weekend because I'm just really low on extra pieces of wood. Looks like this guy's already searching for food, so I'm going to throw some food in there. But man, look how long that tail. Look at that liar tail. That is awesome. Can't wait till they get fully acclimated and color up. Boy, they're really flat. Oops. Wouldn't be a video if I didn't zoom in too far. Oh, we can get some good shots of this liar tail now. So, like I said. These should get upwards of 14 inches, and my plan is to put them in my 240 gallon. I'll have hopefully lots of woods to stack up where they can hide in. I don't think the uh, Mabu Puffer is going to bother them at all. So far my Mabu Puffer hasn't shown any interest in fish. But I'm going to let these guys get adjusted. I'll check back in in a, in a few hours, maybe tomorrow, and we'll see how they're looking. Alright, so it's actually the next day, and I just met a fellow hobbyist, and we traded some snails. So that's pretty neat. I got this yellow, uh, yellow apple snail. Got six of these guys, and he is breeding these black mystery snails. So I kind of uh, picked out my best golds and blues, and he knows the situation, but wasn't too concerned about it. Their shells, since they're still breeding and uh, dropping clutches, 
and it does look like they're getting better. I have some ones here, oops, like this guy here is getting better, this one here, here, so they're starting to look better. The blue ones are kind of looking the same though, but the gold ones are definitely looking better. So I got quite a few of the black ones, he just had a ton of them, and only a small handful of these uh, yellow rabbit snails. I think that's what they were. Just real goofy looking guys. That seems like the worst way ever to travel. So yeah, they're all grouped up over here. I just dropped in a bunch of food. Still waiting on some uh, food from Amazon. I don't know why my prime shipping is taking over a week now. It's getting kind of frustrating. So I just thought that was pretty cool and I'd show you guys some new snails I got. But uh, let's go look at those uh, whip whiptail catfish, see how they're doing. Okay, here we are. They haven't really changed their coloration that much. So maybe that's just the way they're going to be. The male's hanging out in the back. And I'm pretty confident to say that I got one male and two females. Man, you can kind of make out his, his liar tail going across that all the way across. Um, so far, no issues. There's the L52 Butterfly Pleco. I just dropped uh, some food in here too, so they're all kind of milling around. There's another one over there, a lot darker color. This is definitely the best looking butterfly pleco I have. But uh, super happy about scoring these guys. I always love seeing a fish that I've never even that I've never seen before in person. And they just blend in really good with this sand. I feel bad. I definitely need to get some more wood, some more hides for them. That's what I'll be working on today. When you guys see this, I'll hopefully be up collecting woods and rocks up in the mountains, as long as the weather co cooperates. Uh, and what else can we look at? I guess we can do an update on my 75 gallon crypt tank. It's been a while, I think. So let's go uh, see what's going on in there. So here we are, looking pretty green. I recently swapped out the Phoenix uh, Planet Plus 24-7. I had two of those on here and swapped it out for some just some regular T8 shop light fixture about a month ago. And so far everything's been doing good, especially over here in this corner. It's really starting to get bushy. The crypts are spreading. Uh, and I just saw a fish that I don't know that I've got on camera before. Bummer, I just fed them, so I was trying to coax them out, so the water is kind of all scrounged up right now. But shoot, hopefully you guys caught that. It's the male killifish that I never see. And now I'm trying to find where he went. The camera's probably staring right at him, but I'm not seeing him. Hmm. There's a auto sinkless down in here. These actually breed in here. Most of the fry get eaten, but every once in a while you'll see like a sub adult that made it through. And there's quite a few of them in here. You just there's so many plants in here, they stay well hidden. Man, I really wanted to get that killifish on camera. I don't even remember if I, or don't know if I remember what kind it is. So I was kind of hoping to get it on camera so you guys could tell me. Certainly not a killifish expert. Alright, I just found him back here in the corner. This guy here hanging out in the current. 
if I remember correctly, it's like a bivantum or bivantium, something like that, I think. He's, uh, he, uh, he is always hanging out back there. There's also two females in here, but I never see them. One of the bigger females comes, actually comes out quite a bit, but there's a smaller female that I just never see. See if he'll come out again. I can kind of see him in the reflection. Oh, here he comes. Of course, he's hanging out where it's dark now. Already zoomed in pretty far. But this is one of the only killifish I own. I also own the Norman's Lamp Eye Killy and have bred those successfully. Normally the female is over here. So you see the overflow box and then there's like an inch space back there in the corner. And that's normally where the bigger female hangs out is back up there in that corner. But I probably should have tried to film him before I fed him and got everyone all riled up. But anyways, if you know what type of killifish this is, definitely uh, leave it in the comments. Like I said, I think it's a bivantium or bivantum, something like that. I guess I could just Google it. Look at those cherry barbs. Those look really good. The rainbows are starting to get some color on them. Those are the Snapper Creek rainbows from Gary Lang. So real quick I wanted to show this. This is the first time I've actually ever seen one of them eating. And these are the Tetra color granules. The same one that uh, same ones that LR Brett's Aquatic uses. So I'm trying him by his recommendation. Normally I would give these give these to my shrimp, but I figured you know these guys might like them too. The other ones seem not to to care about them, but this guy sure is mowing them down. So yeah, I thought that was pretty neat and uh, kind of cool to get that on camera. Hey, so I just wanted to do a quick update on the betta fish here. He's still doing great. Still looking amazing, I think. As you can see, the uh, guppy is still in here somewhere there he is cruising around he's gotten a lot bigger since the last time I've shown this tank and I act I have actually named them so this guy I've named Harry and the guppy is named Lloyd and if, in case you don't get that reference that is from Dumb and Dumber which I would say is in my top five all-time comedies so that's where I got the names from. The the boost of Philandria in the back has kind of gone downhill. But hopefully it rebounds. I'm going to start fertilizing in here. And also the shrimp are still in here somewhere. Uh, hmm. Oh, there's one back on the rock. So the cherry shrimp are still in here and doing great. I'm probably going to move in, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so more cherry shrimp. Might as well start getting them to breed in here too. Obviously the uh, betta doesn't really care about them. Doesn't care about uh, Lloyd over there either, apparently. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to actually be able to have some other stuff in with my betta fish. And uh, the dwarf hair grass is still kind of carpeting, which is pretty awesome for what I consider a low-tech tank. There are two Phoenix LEDs on here, 
the clip-on Phoenix Planet Plus and then this one is just a regular uh, Phoenix LED but it's still I, I believe it's the 7k spectrum Java ferns not growing at all but what are you gonna do about that so yeah that's just a kind of quick update on the beta and uh, we will continue on and unfortunately I'm going to have to end this video on a Saturn note and that's this guy here that I just picked up off the floor my open top experiment I think is gonna be a failure for my multis here um, this was a full-grown male and it kind of sucks to lose a full-grown male because they do take a while to grow out so you know live and learn it sucks I feel terrible but uh, time to put the tops back on. Alright YouTube, so that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it somewhat enjoyable. I know I had a lot of fun. Super stoked about the whiptail catfish. And I uh, can't wait to bring you more updates in the future on them as they get uh, bigger and kind of get more settled. So go ahead and, and subscribe if you haven't. Again, thanks for watching and I will see you... I think Monday is my next live stream, so I'll see you guys then. Thank you.